the first film I want to see in February is Invictus, about the South African president, Nelson Mandela, trying to fix a divided country by winning the 1995 Rugby World Cup. The movie starts off as a political drama, but then moves on to become more of a powerful sporting film, if that makes any sense. Nelson Mandela is played wonderfully by Morgan Freeman, a person whom he's always wanted to play, and seems to pull off this character really well. Now, I don't know much about Nelson Mandela, so I, I don't know how this movie holds up to that. Um, Matt Damon also stars as Francois Pinard, at least that's how I think you pronounce it, the Springbok rugby captain. Um, Damon is considered in my eyes to be one of the greatest actors out there. If you look at some of the movies he's been in, and some of the directors he's worked with, he's definitely one of the best. For this film, he's he's beefed out a bit, piled on a few pounds of muscle to actually fit the role of rugby captain, and surprisingly, he plays him really well. The, the second half of the film, I found, was far superior to the first for a number of reasons, most not actually concerning the film itself. Um, the film starts to really shine after the Springbok rugby team win over the black Africans and the country starts believing in them. Although the ending is is pretty obvious, it has an uplifting quality to it and will definitely bring a smile to your face. The second film I went to see is The Wolfman, a remake of the 1941 film with Lon Chaney and Claude Rains. Um, high expectations for this film, being a fan of all werewolf Wolfman films, especially the original. Um, Benicio Del Toro, I thought it was great casting to play Lawrence Talbot because not only does he have that sort of edgy look to him, but he also resembles Lon Chaney Jr. in some ways. Um, I also like the overall look to the character of the Wolfman, it resembled that of the original, and very little CG was used surprisingly, but obviously the transformation scenes were CG, sadly we probably won't see a transformation sequence like in American Wealth in London again. The film has lots of blood and gore with people's heads being ripped off, thrown out of windows and impaled on spikes, really good visual effects. The story with the second Wolfman is a little cliche, the characters were also not developed enough and are very shallow, but I honestly enjoyed this film because it doesn't try to be anything more than a remake. Um, has a lot of great scenes, some of which stick out more than others. The gypsy camp scene is amazing, as is when the wolfman is running around London and he jumps on the statue with the eagle or the gargoyle. Um, it could be a very iconic scene there. Um, overall, it's a good old-fashioned horror movie. It reminds me of the old Hammer House horror films. Oh, one more thing I need to mention. Um, search The Beast at Your Door on YouTube. It's the... It's the theme from the second trailer to The Wolfman, it's really catchy. The third film is one I was really looking forward to, Solomon Kane, based on the graphic novels created by Robert E. Howard, the same guy who wrote the Conan comics I believe. Ok first off, I did not like the way we introduced to the character of Solomon Kane. to me it seemed cheap and was more like a game intro than a pre credit sequence. Also the ending is probably probably the most disappointing element to this film, it seemed out of place with the rest and it's as though the director wanted to end it as soon as possible. Um, anyway, now for the things I liked, I love the scenes which take place in the English countryside when Solomon Kane meets up with a family, the acting from everyone involved is good for the majority of the film, I especially like the dialogue spoken by Solomon Kane, I mean if you watch the trailer there there's some great lines said there. The scene when Solomon Kane fights all the soldiers to protect the family, that is possibly the highlight of the film for me. Um, in conclusion, it's an alright film with a lot of action and magical elements, but not without its disappointments. The fourth film is From Paris With Love, about an American spy working with an employee of the US ambassador to basically stop a group of terrorists. Um, the American spy Charlie Wax, who's played by John Travolta, steals the film. If you've seen the trailers, you know why. He's just a badass. Um, Jonathan Rhys Meyer's character, however, is the opposite. He, he would be the brains of the operation if he knew what the hell was going on. It's interesting to see the relationship between these two characters. Um, now for the storyline. It's totally unbelievable, but 
that's what makes it fun because when I'm watching a film I don't want to be bored I want to be entertained and in that sense this movie really delivered I also love the Pulp Fiction Royale with Cheese reference as well I thought it was pretty clever and overall if you've seen the trailers and marketing campaigns you know what to expect really it's just a cheesy fun action flick with lots of explosions and car chases The last film I went to see in February is The Crazies, a remake of the 1973 George Romero film about a plane which was carrying a biological weapon of some sort which crash landed and has polluted the water supply in which the residents of a local town get the drinking water from, thus turning them into psycho killers or crazies. Now for starters I haven't seen the original film so I really couldn't tell you if it stays true to it so I can only review it for what it is. Um, obviously, as you've probably guessed, it contains a lot of jumpy scenes and gory scenes, something which most movies nowadays have, um, most horror movies have, anyway. Rada Mitchell and Timothy Oliphant, uh, two great actors, have starred in some of my favourite f- movies, so it was great to see them working together. And with these two actors comes great acting. Um, not only from these two, but from everyone involved, it seems at times that The actors are genuinely scared. Reminds me of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake in in the way that the film makers try to make you feel scared for the characters rather than just to shock you from an audience perspective. Um, I also like the fact that when the four characters band together, not only do they have to stay away from the crazies, but also from the military soldiers who have put the town in quarantine and other survivors who were trying to stay alive. Um, although the ending isn't exactly spectacular, um, I found that it fits really well with the rest of the film. Um, it has some great memorable scenes, uh, just off the top of my head, the car wash scene, the scene where the guy starts stabbing the hospitalised patients in the beds with a pitchfork, um, when Timothy Oliphant fights one of the crazies in the police station, a lot of great scenes. Um, Like I said, I don't know how it holds up to the original, but from what I've heard, the original wasn't that good anyway. So, this may be the case of the remake actually being better than the original. Um, Thanks for watching, I'll try and get my March movie reviews finished during the Easter holidays, but until then, uh, I don't know what to say.